Hi, I'm Don Reed. Are you ready for the increase? You know, with new RV sales up over 30%, are you ready for your new service customers that are going to be coming into your dealership uh, in, the coming, in the coming year? I want to share with you 12 money-making tips in the next 12 minutes that you can use in your dealership to get ready to make 2021 your best year ever in service and parts. So I'm going to give you a 12-point checkup to help bring your net up. And we're going to start off with my favorite, absolute favorite, one of the most key metrics in any service department is technician productivity. So your goal, obviously, is to get to 100%, meaning that if your technicians are working 40 hours a week on the clock, that they're producing 40 hours a week on your repair orders. Number two, your labor gross profit per technician uh, per month should be in the range of about $12,000. Now, the only way you're going to get to that $12,000 is that obviously that productivity has to, has to be up around that, uh, that 100% uh, uh, productivity mark. So if we can set 100% productivity as our goal going forward for, uh, for next year, uh, that's going to uh, help you uh, in focusing on all the other metrics that I'm going to talk about because productivity can cure just about any ill uh, in a service department. You should focus on having your advisors closing a minimum of 50% of their upsell presentations to your customers. Upsell defined as uh, an additional product or additional service that the advisor has recommended to your customers. Uh, half of those customers should be saying yes to those presentations. Number four, are you tracking and measuring one item repair orders on your retail uh, repair orders? Which means that you know the customer comes in with the, with the primary item, uh, they're in for a dewinterization for example, uh, and we write the repair order for that one simple, that one simple process and we're done. No other recommendations for additional products or services. That's called a one item uh, repair order. And what we find at Dealer Pro RV and visiting dealers all over the country is that a very high percentage uh, of dealers are running one item repair orders in that 50, even 60% range. So again, our goal, if you can focus on getting one item repair orders down to 15%, you're gonna have a great year. Your effective labor rate your retail labor rate that you're, that you're charging to your customers should have a margin of about 75%, which means your cost of sale to your technicians can exceed 25% of whatever you're selling uh, your labor for. So your effective labor rate should be producing a margin of about 75%. Additionally, we find again that in most stores that we go into, most of you out there are doing a great job of holding that labor margin in that 75% range. But when it comes to parts, uh, we see a wide array of margins when it comes to parts. I've seen as low as 20%, I've seen as high as 50%, uh, but retail, and I'm talking retail parts now, obviously we're not talking about warranty or internal. So we find that a good benchmark for retail parts is about 40%. Now the only way you're going to get to 40% is that you have to have an effective parts matrix pricing strategy, which simply means that the lower the price of a part, the higher the markup of the part. The higher the price of a part, the lower the markup on that part. So the cost of the part is going to dictate how much you intend to mark up that part when it comes to your retail sales, but we want to see you achieve a margin of about 40%. Next item is policy adjustment. Well, what is policy adjustment? Some people call it goodwill. Uh, and, and you know, as an ex-dealer, my definition of policy adjustment is this. It's a charge on a repair order that the manufacturer is not going to pay for, the customer is not going to pay for it, which means I'm going to pay for it. In other words, that's money coming out of the dealer's pocket. But what I want you to understand is, is that policy adjustment just doesn't happen by accident. You have to realize that an employee in your dealership 
made a conscious decision to reach into your pocket and give away your money. Now, I don't know about you, uh, but when I was a leader, I wasn't real keen on that idea. All right, so you got to get a handle on policy adjustment, a prime example, would be lot damage. That if you damage someone's unit when you're moving it in and out uh, of your service department or around out on the lot, uh, you make that repair and that's charged to policy adjustment. So the general rule of thumb is we don't want to see policy adjustment exceeding 2% of your service labor gross. When it comes to the parts department, we expect to see an operating profit and you should be, you should be focusing your upcoming business plan for 2021 to, to make sure that your parts department is going to have an operating profit of 30%. Operating profits defined as net profit before uh, before interest and taxes. So after you pay all of your expenses, all your fixed overhead, all your variable expenses, your parts department should be netting somewhere in the neighborhood of 30%. And your service operating profit uh, in the in the same light should be running in that 25% uh, or even higher. My favorite subject on this slide. Is service absorption. We talk about service absorption a lot at Dealer Pro. If any of you have attended any of my workshops, you've heard me talk about service absorption. So what exactly is service absorption? Well, look at it this way. Let's say you come to work tomorrow as a dealer. You reach in your pocket, you pull out your keys, you unlock that front door, and you know the minute that you step inside, 100% of your overhead is paid for. How would that make you feel? Pretty good, I suspect. Meaning that the first sale that you make today in any department, the first sale that you make today is building net profit. That's what service absorption means. So our goal is to get all of the gross profit from your labor sales and your part sales uh, to cover all of your overhead expenses. What a great place to be. But I can assure you of this, if you are managing a dealership that is 100% service absorbed, you can weather any storm. You can weather any depression. You can weather any event that comes your way if you're 100% service absorbed. Because we know that if vehicle sales go down, service departments don't decline uh, proportionally. So service absorption is a big deal. And it's something that each and every one of you should be focusing on every single month as well as your management team as to what you can do to raise that absorption and get it to that 100 percent mark yes we do have some dealers that are exceeding 100 percent service absorption a helpful tool for your service advisors is to present recommended maintenance menus every single customer every single visit does not matter why they are there Every customer should be advised by your advisors as to what the maintenance needs are of that towable or that motorized vehicle or whatever the unit is, it does not matter. But you need to have a menu. Now that menu has to be uh, product specific because obviously the menu for a travel trader is not gonna be the same as it is for a diesel pusher. So we have to, we have to prepare menus that are most definitely product uh, specific. And lastly, you need to implement a plan in your service department where every single unit, doesn't matter whether it's a motorhome, travel trailer, toy hauler, whatever it might be, that you have to do what we call a unit health check on that particular uh, unit every time it comes into your store, looking for obvious, obvious maintenance needs and or obvious repairs. And this has to be done in, in the, uh, at the initial uh, diagnosis of the unit when it comes in for the primary item. Once you get that primary item diagnosed, let's get out there and make sure that your technicians are doing a proper unit health check so that we can keep our customers advised on what it takes to make sure that their RV is in a safe and reliable condition. So here are the five steps to building your plan based upon those 12 tips uh, that I just gave you earlier. Number one, 
you have to be able to effectively measure what you what you intend to manage. You got to measure. That comes from uh, uh, obviously reliable financial statements, uh, daily reporting on the overall productivity of your technicians and your service advisors uh, and your parts personnel. So you have to measure what it is that you want to manage and moving forward with your profit improvement plan. Number two, then you must identify through that management and that measurement, what opportunities do you have or do you see in your service to operation, your parts operation, for improving the overall performance of your team? Identify those opportunities. Number three, determine what solutions are going to be needed to take advantage of those opportunities uh, and get them headed in the right direction. Number four, and then you're going to have to be able to implement change. Implement change. Obviously, you're going to agree with me that if you expect to achieve different results in the upcoming year, you're most likely going to have to do something different. Or you're going to have to do some different things than what you're doing right now. Something has to change. And that means that you have to get the buy-in of your management team and the buy-in of all of your employees, especially your technicians and your service advisors. And I want you to understand that this term buy-in, it, it's not optional. It's not optional. And by that, what I mean is when you decide what needs to be changed and you determine how you're going to change it, sounds to me like uh, that's becoming part of your company policy. Well, if it's company policy, then that means that the dealer expects it to be to be utilized and, and followed through with on every transaction, every day, every customer. It's not an option. So remember, you're not running a democracy. You know, as a dealer, you don't need anybody's vote to go out there and make a decision that you're going to start inspecting everybody's unit. You know, as a dealer, you don't need everybody's vote to make sure that your advisors are going to present a proper uh, maintenance menu to every customer on every visit. We don't hold an election every time we want to go out here and implement a new process, a new procedure, or a new product. Okay? So be a leader, make that decision, and we're going to have the best year in 2021 that you've ever seen. You want more? Well, we have a special RBDA convention offer for $1,995. I'll send one of my training team members into your store for two full days of training and consultation on how we're going to improve your dealership to start focusing on those 12 tips that I gave you other. The important thing to understand is that 1995 is all inclusive. That includes trainers' travel expenses. Uh, that includes the materials that they're gonna bring with them. No other add-ons, 1995, two full days, in your dealership. So here's what you're going to get. You're going to get the training solutions for your employee performance improvement. Number two, we're going to give you a training plan for increasing your overall profitability by 40% or even more. Number three, you're going to get a technician productivity evaluation so we can show you what the opportunities are in improving your technicians regardless of where they're performing right now. We're going to provide some advanced production structures for reducing your repair event cycle time and get that backlog that you have out there of two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it might be. We want to get that reduced to a more manageable level. And lastly, we're going to prepare for you a business plan pro forma going forward for 2021. So click that link in your email and let's get started. Don't wait.